So I've been covering this game since its announcement in 2017 and it seems like a fever dream that we have all these amazing heroes finally playable in a AAA title. If you were to travel back into the past and tell me that this game would be an actual thing, I'd laugh in your face. Because superhero games usually don't get that level of production, especially with a roster of insanely unique characters. They're constantly at the mercy of rush deadlines and developers usually lean towards brand recognition to skate by. But the talented team at Crystal Dynamics has turned this stigma on its head and reassured us the future looks bright for this ambitious venture. Triggered a classified shield security system. Detected. What's up guys, RBG here bringing you my review of Marvel's Avengers. And I gotta give a big thank you to Square Enix for providing me with an early review copy of this game. If you've been following my coverage for this particular title, then you know that it's been a crazy ride. You've heard my excitement as well as my apprehension on what's to come with Marvel's Avengers. Given the insane amount of flavor profiles that Square Enix promised with it, it seemed like it'd be too much of a tall order to deliver. Not to mention that things seem to get a little cold in terms of actual details. Many people have asked what exactly is this game, or why is the description for it so confusing? And in order to get those answers, I implore you to play the game and figure it out for yourself. This isn't me shilling or anything because it does have its issues, but the positives far outweigh the negatives. In a time where the box office juggernaut that is the MCU has gone silent and a global pandemic has enshrouded our lives in darkness, we absolutely needed this game to light a fire of hope. Firstly, we have to talk about the graphics. I know this has had a pretty divisive debate among the fans, but I can happily say that the visuals look amazing. It doesn't matter if someone uploads footage from it in 4K or 60fps, the compressed videos you find on the internet don't do the game justice. You really need to experience this for yourself on your TV. There's so much attention to detail made on the characters and environments. From the insanely realistic skin textures on the Hulk, to the faded and overwatched logo on Kamala Khan's Captain Marvel t-shirt. I'd also like to point out that if you are one of those color gate individuals who are concerned about the game not being vibrant enough, then you can go ahead and put those concerns to rest, because this game features excellent color grading to complement its diverse cast of characters. With that said, you will notice a few instances where the graphics don't necessarily shine through, especially in some of the more industrial locations, and even though real-time in-game scenes are night and day compared to your more cinematic cutscenes, it really shows with this game. One of the biggest issues I've noticed is that of temporal passing, which is a method used for camera switching during cutscenes. Since different artifacts are found within each scene, it can be a little difficult for textures to load up on some of the characters, leaving them with this smooth look that looks like they've been covered in oil. And while this is something that can occasionally happen to any game, especially on consoles, I noticed that it happened more than often in Marvel's Avengers. And that's with the game being played at max settings on the PS4 Pro. But other than that, everything looks like what you'd expect from Crystal Dynamics Foundation Engine. If you're a fan of the environments they developed for the recent Tomb Raider games, then you're gonna absolutely love the environments for this one. Stages that feature forestry look like they're full of life, and I have to applaud the developers for making me feel like I'm standing amongst giants when I'm in the more iconic set pieces like the Helicarrier. I wonder if he's this tall in person. I can't help but feel like a giddy little kid when approaching all of my favorite Avengers members, and Kamala Khan effortlessly serves as the best choice for the audience surrogate in this matter. If Deku from My Hero Academia and Luffy from One Piece fuse together, we get Kamala. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. Show what you got. Come on, you can do better than that. Yeah, now we're talking? Like many, I was a bit apprehensive about her prominent involvement with the game's story. But after seeing how things play out, she's a welcome addition that I look forward to seeing in other Marvel mediums like the MCU. And I know that some of her dialogue will come off a bit cringy to fans who have a more mature palette when it comes to stories, but I wouldn't have it any other way. This feels authentic and it goes with her character motif from the comics. Not to mention the fact that she's a kid, children say and do corny things from time to time. As an adult in his 30s, I can easily say that I'd instantly revert back into my 10 year old self if I was standing in front of Iron Man, so it's not really a problem for me. And the character is utilized in a way that she doesn't feel forced like so many others assume she'd be. I also gotta point out that the voice acting and motion capture for the character is done so well that you can easily overlook some of the cringy dialogue, because you're too busy seeing how realistic these characters interact with one another in this fantasy world. Even though the cast features actors who've voiced these characters in other iterations, you can feel that they're trying to inject more into this game. And while this version of the Avengers takes a lot of inspirations from the expansive iconography, Crystal Dynamics does a good job of reassuring the audience that this is their Avengers. And these Avengers have never played better. 
As I mentioned earlier, superhero games with these particular characters never really got their right treatment. While some have had their moment to shine in one form or another, they've all come short of hitting their mark because there wasn't enough time to fully develop them, and that's for one hero per game. So it was hard to imagine how Crystal Dynamics was going to pull what seemed to be impossible off. But as it turns out, they've managed to do that and then some. If you had the privilege of playing the beta, then you probably have a good idea of what these characters feel like. Iron Man plays like he would as if you had control of him in the MCU movies. The Hulk has weight to accompany his unimaginable strength. Thor's hammer feels like something that was forged from a dying star. And Captain America gives you the perfect balance of power and agility. All of these characters feel crafted in a way that makes you want to play with each one of them in their own game. Just when I thought I was satisfied with Iron Man, I found myself having a blast with characters like Miss Marvel. It was surprise after one big surprise. Something else that was surprising was how much better the full game feels compared to the beta. You would assume that since we were just a month away from the game's release, that the developers wouldn't be able to fix the numerous issues the beta bared, but somehow they managed to pull it off. Whenever you're playing with a specific character, the controller gives you the right amount of vibration to accompany their actions, and the sound design is better than I ever would imagine. I know I'm not the only one who said this, but after playing the beta, one of the biggest complaints was that the game didn't sound audacious enough. Anytime the Avengers would plow through enemies, you just didn't hear the sensational sounds you thought you should have. Thankfully, the actual game doesn't have these problems. When you're doing team takedowns on giant aim robots, you can hear each individual attack from the respective hero, but occasionally certain sounds or voice clips don't register during in-game cutscenes, specifically during the moments in the helicarrier when the Avengers are discussing missions at the war table. I'm not sure if the audio from the table was supposed to come out of my controller, but sometimes it chose not to work. And since we're on the topic of the helicarrier, I just gotta point out that you'll be spending a good amount of time in there. It serves as the base of operations, and as you progress through the story, it'll go from being this damaged vessel to a fully functional one. From there, you can access main missions as well as side ones called hero chains, and I gotta be honest, some of these missions come off a little shallow, which is a little weird because at the start of the campaign, everything seems to transition smoothly. We get these awesome narrative driven set pieces with Kamala Khan accompanied by the occasional fight with aimbots, and that's what I look for in stories, missions that keep me on the edge of my seat. But when the story progresses in this game, it sort of loses a bit of that wow factor it started out with. I'm not saying that it's like that for the rest of the game, because it does offer those tightly structured set pieces, but they're stretched out so far in between, and the majority of those missions feel a little uninspired with lackluster level designs. More times than not, I've found myself running from point A to point B in small corridors, making it a little awkward to roam around in with larger than life characters such as the Hulk. And once I was granted the freedom to explore in the more expansive areas, some of them can get a little repetitive. You spend most of your time fighting waves of enemies followed by simple puzzle solving. I also noticed that some of the heroes can go by neglected if you choose not to play their side missions. By the time I made it to the end of the game, my power level for the Hulk was extremely low, so the missions and the story in general feel a bit disjointed. But I gotta give the developers credit for changing certain things like the secret caches when I revisit levels. These are gonna be the places you wanna find because they're riddled with gear chests, and that's also what's gonna determine how strong your characters are. And depending on your level, you won't be able to access certain missions, so you may or may not like the looter shooter aspect for the game. I myself personally don't have a problem with it since it's a game that you can play with friends. If anything, it gives me the incentive to play more. One of the things that I've heard beta testers complain about was how the gear effects don't seem noticeable. But on the contrary, it's all about how much you equip the right gear. Even though it doesn't change your characters aesthetically, it does offer some game changing effects. And I'm specifically talking about some of the elemental gear which provides you with special perks. They offer around 6 elements such as pin particles which can shrink an enemy so you can deal out more damage along with others such as Gamma. It was so addictive playing around with these things and building a set that complements my playstyle. Topple that onto the expansive skill trees for each character and you got a game that offers a ton of variety in terms of gameplay. And I'm looking forward to what comes next in the post launch. Marvel's Avengers is a very ambitious title that takes on a lot of challenges. And while I think its positives far outweigh its negatives, it may not be the game some are looking for. It offers a story driven experience, but it sort of fumbles the elements that it borrowed wholesale. And the online co-op can get a little repetitive from time to time. The developers are juggling so much at once that they occasionally drop the ball, which is something I suspected going in. But considering that this is just the beginning, I expect them to learn from their mistakes. Nonetheless, this game offers a little of something for everybody. You just can't expect it to be perfect. It does just enough to make it a solid experience. That's why I'm giving it a 7.9 out of 10. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I wanted to focus more on the other aspects besides the gameplay, because if you saw or played the beta, that's what you basically get in the full game. Everything just feels more refined. 
I haven't had much time to play the online, but from what I've heard, the matchmaking still needs work, so we'll just have to wait and see how the developers go about fixing those issues. But let me know what you think. Are you looking forward to playing the game once it launches worldwide? And if you've already had the luxury of playing it like I have, what would you rate the game? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed it, I would appreciate it if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference and it really helps out things because YouTube hasn't been kind to all my videos with the algorithm. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another review. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.